not catching fades anymore Gotta keep my hands clean when they come for the bar Keep it smooth like a dawn, making moves in the dark Cause I learned how to swim in the pool full of sharks Now they coaches, cause they can't read all his motions How the kid never switch codes, but he cold switch focus Staring down your team with a frozen Ice cold look that can end the summer solstice Cause I'm more like the top dog Keep on running game in the game I don't know dog, so all right, heads off, blocks off. I just sent Gabriel to go get a new head gasket because the one that we had there was pre-drilled for the blocks of uh, VTEC conversion uh, dowel pins. In this case, we're not using those. We're using these other ones. I forgot the name of them. Uh, I think they're like Hashimura or something like that. They're like 10 bucks on eBay. Those are like the best ones that we've found so far. But the thing is with those, they go in the uh they go on the back side here the blocks which is what i have on my car they go on the front side here but you do have to drill the head gasket for the ones that i have for these you don't they're the actual size so you just drop your head gasket and go which is why i believe they're a superior design um and then we just got us an ebay block guard here um block guard. or sorry block guard uh sandwich plate just got us an eBay sandwich plate on here with the uh, Red Horse AN line setup for the uh, VTEC and a catch can setup here. The ones that go into the back of the block. Um, so we are going to be installing a uh, catch can. And the reason for that is because if you didn't know, um, the B16s, they used to have their, uh, the B16s always had their, uh, their breathers in the block in one of these. If you try to take this out and put like a VTEC one in here, it doesn't fit. It's just the the diameter of this is just much bigger than the actual fitting from the uh, from the B16. Um, I've tried to do it before; it just it, it will not work. Um, and then, so with the B16s having the breather in the block and the uh, and the uh, the VTEC heads having the breather or the VTEC. VTEC engines have the breather in the block. Non-VTEC engines have the breather in the head. Since we're doing neither, neither nor, technically this engine assembled doesn't have a, a breather system. So you have to make one with the catch cans or you're gonna start popping seals with the crankcase pressure. But um, on another note, Shane over here has made some progress. He's working on the suspension here. He's trying to get those shiny uh, skunk to uh, Control arms disconnected off the spindle there so we can get these axles out. And uh, he's got everything. Everything on that side. Everything pretty much sorted over on this side. Just Gabriel a few. started this side and I think he gave up. So. Well, no, we got the, we got <laughs> nah, the headers. Got the we got the headers completely off here. We're gonna oh, have to disconnect these off. wires here. Those are just gonna get thrown on top of the motor. It's all gonna get dropped all together. And the, yeah, like you can see. We got this disconnected here. The starter wire is gonna stay in the car here. It's a starter wire slash like ABS power wire, et cetera, et cetera. And then this right here is all disconnected. So you can see this is all just gonna come down with the motor. Um, yeah, clutch line is disconnected and everything. And uh, yeah, so this is all gonna get dropped down as an assembly and then we'll disassemble it uh, once it's out. But uh yeah, so for now, I'm gonna go and enjoy myself a nice cold beer. Shane, would you like one or would you like to wait till you're done to reward yourself? Uh, let me get this control arm off. Fuck it, let me get one. <laughs> Typical Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I gotta wait for him to get back. Actually, what I'm gonna do is in the trunk of my car, I have like a uh, like an AC drain pan that I use for this type of stuff to catch all the, the fluids and stuff that come out of these motors. So I'm gonna go take that out of the trunk of my car clean it and then uh so that way i can put it under here and i can flip this motor over and drain everything out that's out of it because i need to remove these studs and clean everything out with brake cleaner make sure all the contaminants and all the nasty stuff is like out of here so we don't mess up any threads because you guys have no idea like how easy it is to strip these out and i'm telling you unless you're trying to like go a bigger size or i mean there's really no fix i haven't really heard of anybody going with bigger like thread sizes on these usually everybody just scraps the block and gets another block um and with the at the rate that these b series are disappearing nowadays and even some of the k's you can't you there, there's not really many motors to spare out there so uh 
we need to make sure we take every precaution to make sure that we don't strip these out. All right, so an update uh, after all the storming and everything that we endured here. So I was saying earlier that I was gonna kind of go over an explanation as to why I only use the graphite and I don't like using the oil as a lubricant. Um, but it's kind of too late. You're probably not gonna see it now. This hole right here was like really bad. There was like so much stuff that came out. It was like a mixture of like silicone and oil and water and debris. Um, but this is why you need to make sure that you take these studs out. Don't just retorque them. Take these studs out. If you ever get a motor like this or if you're ever redoing yours, make sure you take these studs out, flip the motor over, get all the crap out of there, spray brake cleaner in there, and don't leave the brake cleaner in there. Get some type of get some type of compressed air can or something and make sure you get everything out of there what i like to do is i just like to hit it with brake cleaner look you see all that oil coming out of there yeah some of that is like a mixture of like when you take the head off and like cooling or oil and stuff falls in there which is one of the reasons why you want to make sure you clean these off really good but a lot of times people when you put the oil in there unless you're going to torque them unless you're gonna torque them like right away don't put oil in there because what happens is the oil does travel down and it creates kind of like a little i don't know i guess you could call it like a suction bubble or like a suction pool at the bottom and you heard that kind of like smooching noise yeah that was the suction of the the oil and the water and everything breaking so if you don't torque these right away um that little suction pool, once you're sitting there torquing and you're trying to get these things to take 80 foot pounds, um, that little pool of oil that's down at the bottom that's dripped down from the threads of this will start creating resistance. And what you actually start doing is you'll start kind of creating like a spring-like. See, this one wasn't too bad. It's still dirty, but it wasn't as bad as the other ones. Um, you kind of start creating like a spring-like line, spring -like motion. So it's kind of like uh, if any of y'all took science in high school which i'm pretty sure most of y'all did when they were teaching you geology they were talking about tectonic plates and stuff like that and how they both kind of press against each other until one of them eventually springs up and that's how tsunamis are created or earthquakes imagine it's the same thing you're sitting here trying to put 80 pounds on this thing and you're going all the way down you have this other force pushing up against it and what happens one of them is going to have to give in to the other force one of the forces is going to be greater the oil isn't going anywhere so the only thing that can back out is this and when this thing backs out it's bringing the threads with it and when that happens your block is gone Running game and the gang will it cost y'all I be calling plays from a plane while I'm off court But we ain't the same, you a lame, I'm a mob star Actually, I'm a top dog on a stat sheet Off court, but I call plays for the athletes When the cop cars try to catch me Cause I rolled off in a taxi Put my feet up, I'm relaxing Singing Figaro with no accent While I pull strings from the streets in Do it all with a straight face, I'm the kingpin Top dog, top flow, boss mode, I'm the kingpin Showstopper, top dog, top five, I'm the kingpin They know I'm a dog and a beast, man Yeah, I keep the peace with Okie dokie, so real quick, before I slap this head on Yes, it is raining, yes, it is wet everywhere This is Florida, we're expecting a hurricane Do we care? No, nope. uh, Not exactly Um, so... I have the head gasket on here. I have the studs on here. Unfortunately, I didn't have any of the ARP lube and I do not have any of the Permatex anti seize which is like my preferred form of like the graphite grease that I like to use on here. So I ended up having to use oil. But if you notice, for those of y'all that don't know, if you notice all of these studs are the exact same height. What I ended up doing was I lubed the bottom part of the studs with uh, some oil I put them in here. This block was upside down earlier. I put brake cleaner in the holes, make sure to get all the crud and everything out of there. We let everything sit upside down for a little while, sprayed it again, cleaned the block off. After that, I flipped it upside down again just to make sure there was nothing left in there. And then what I started doing was I dipped these in the oil, started running them down by hand. And if you notice now, it's kind of hard to see because it's pitch black out here. I can't turn them no more. Every single one of these, I can't turn them anymore by hand. That would indicate that they are bottomed out. 
some people like to use uh, hex keys, including myself, to make sure that they're bottomed out. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a hex key that fits these right now. Um, and the, I was actually using a T30 earlier, but that one ended up snapping on me on one that was like really stuck, like over in this corner. Um, so I just ended up putting them in by hand, which is what the ARP instructions say anyways. And you, like I said, you can see that they're all the same exact height. That's going to be your telltale to make sure that basically that you did it correctly. If you have this one, this height, and this one's like up here something's wrong here if you can't get this down anymore i would not recommend you put a, uh like a hex head on it and try to push it down anymore because there's going to be something wrong there you need to pull that stud out clean that hole out or what a lot of people do is they get the uh 11 by one and a half taps they run them down in there just to kind of chase the threads and make sure they have nice fresh clean threads uh once you do that then you can go ahead put the head gasket on and go ahead and put the head on just like we're about to do All right, so what time is it? Like 11? 11.30? Oh, I got you right now, hold on. 11.23. 11.23, so 11.23 update. It was raining like a motherfucker. See the car's completely soaked, the ground's completely soaked. We called it a night. Um, motor's pretty much all put together except for the intake manifold. Um, and what else? Uh, like I, gotta, I gotta put that little Okay. I gotta put that little spacer for the uh, for the crank. Yeah. So I gotta put the little spacer back in for the crank, the one that helps the the one that stops the sliding belt, the sliding belt, the timing sliding. belt from sliding. Jesus, I'm tired. <laughs> the timing belt from sliding forward. Um, and what else? The intake manifold has to get painted. I didn't want to keep going because since it was raining, I tried painting the crank pulley and stuff like that. And with the rain and everything, it's, it's just impossible. Water droplets get on everything. The paint starts to lift up. So I made the call. I said, let's put everything away. Hopefully it doesn't rain tomorrow. We'll pick up tomorrow. Um, the accessories I'm not worried about because we're going to, once we take the mold, once we take this out, I'm swapping yeah. all the accessories from this yeah. onto that. Oh, so, yeah. and, um, we tried doing what we could do to take this engine out, but with the rain, you have to keep stopping so we got the axes out so it's kind of ready to drop yeah but not only that but then also with the city and shit bothering him if uh because you know that's how they do down here in palm beach county now in the event that we don't get to drop this motor out this weekend it's just better to have the car on the ground and rolling mm -hmm. so that's one of the main reasons why we stopped working on the motor yep so um but yeah so the car is all in one piece it looks like it runs it doesn't run, but it looks like it runs. Yeah, it, runs. <laughs> it runs. The city might be watching. It runs. It runs. It's got two feet power. Yep. Yep. There you go. Flintstones. Flintstones. Flintstones power. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so hopefully it doesn't rain tomorrow. I can come back and finish up the motor, and then, um, you know, then we can start dropping the LS out of this thing. The transmission that's in this thing is going to end up going on the B20 because that B20 came with a B16 transmission, but because this man has to be on the highway all the time, we don't want to do that to him. That would be like torture, 5,500 RPM for like 30 minutes. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I would not recommend it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to cut the video out here and then uh, I'll pick up the next time that I come back here to work on this thing. It could be tomorrow. It could be next week. We'll see. It's all going to be left to uh, whatever this Florida weather decides to do because we're in that season where it's sunny right there and it's raining right here. So we'll see what happens. See you guys then. Boss mode, I'm the kingpin, showstopper, top dog.